and realize much of what we're doing in our soil movement with our big plows and the bigger and bigger tractors is actually destroying our soil health. Our fields are getting wetter, harder to move. And then one day I suddenly realized the damage we caused within the soil profile or when we we're plowing. So that really engaged me to think about this, what's under our feet. In the past, we've depleted our soil resource. So we started off mapping the field to identify the different places to place the product. And we were doing that through bagged inputs. Now we moved away from the bag to the chicken muck input, but we only need six to eight tonne a hectare of chicken muck. They are producing far more than I need now. So as I've improved my soil quality, I'm now exporting it to my neighbours and other people. So it's sort of rippling out from that base. People want to eat chicken, so it gives us a, a byproduct of the manure to feed back into the soil. The biology that's attached to that manure that's come out the back of that sheep gets all the bacteria and biology working and the insect life working within the soils. And that, and that just wakes up the biology within the soil, but too much will deteriorate. So it's about having them moving about. You know, native breeds used to come along, munch and move on. And we want to recreate that system of come along, eat a bit, move on. So no piece of ground is over uh, munched or trod. Much of our farming system, we've always concentrated on what's above ground and in producing the crop, not improving the soil health. By welcoming livestock back in and using manures, it's actually focusing on waking the soil up to make our crops grow stronger and better in the future. Worms that beaver away, turning the vegetation that sits on the top of the field after harvest and turning it into nutrition for us, munching it up, consuming it, and then we've got some of the larger worms, and there's an example there, that are the deep burrowing ones, and they make these lovely holes, drainage holes in the soil, which means that rainfall percolates away really easily and really quickly, and it means that the conservation no-till farming style of farming is very resilient to the weather and it means the opportunities to plant when you want to plant are much greater as well as the cost savings. The impressive thing about the root structure in, in these cover crops and you can see how far that's gone down is it's gone down like that in a soil that's very friable it's got a nice open pore structure there's been no compaction it hasn't run together in a period of high rainfall like some soils can and you can see there's been absolutely no impedance to how that plant grows and as I said this soil hasn't been tilled and disturbed any deeper than an inch and a half two inches deep for five six years now and it proves that actually you don't need to plow you don't need to till to create an environment for plants to root freely in you have to do a comparison and you can instantly see that with the high rainfall that we've had and this is a, a barley crop that's been planted that the soil surface has run together and it's sort of lost its structure and so now if we get quite a high rainfall again because the top is sealed because there's no um, root structure from the cover crop and much less organic matter that the rain isn't going to percolate into this soil very quickly and Anywhere there's a slight slope, it will start to run off. So any herbicide or nutrition that's been applied to the surface is at risk of running into the, into the water courses. When you go to dig, although it's been ploughed and tilled and cultivated, and in theory should have a loose structure to plant the next crop into, you can see how solid this is and how the rainfall that we've had has run this together and effectively sealed it and next door in the cover crop where every handful had an abundance of worms and fibrous roots and worm holes and open pores of course this land that's been that's been tilled is almost solid and when that dries out it will effectively turn into a house brick because it's very solid and there's there's no natural structure ultimately it's around building resilience in our ground and feeding the soil, keeping the soil living to be able to then grow that crop. We've reduced our ploughing by up to 60% and that is growing. Okay, now what have we done there? So we're still using 
forms of aggressive tillage, so subsoiling, for example, but instead of then plowing the land, we're using a cover crop to then break the land up. And then what we're doing is then minimizing our tillage on top in the spring. So for example, a maize crop will just drill directly in. If it's a spring cereal, we'll drill directly in. And then in the last year, what we've actually done with um, lettuce is we've been able to then come into a field like this here, we disc it, we power hire it, and then we plant our lettuce. So we're only working very, very shallow. So it's a step change over a period of time. Back in 2012, we've had a wettest summer for 100 years, and I, I was standing out in the middle of a lettuce field trying to plant lettuce, and it was wet weather, very, very difficult conditions. And I thought to myself, well, how are the next generation gonna do this? Because ultimately, we need to set them up to succeed.